No-brainer investments are rarely that at the time when you open the position. It's always difficult to buy a stock that's considered expensive, which is why I say over and over again, it's important to more or less ignore the stock price. The stock price doesn't tell you much. In fact, even when you value it using earnings per share or price to earnings multiples, it's hard to know because the different kinds of rates for each sector change dramatically. And the best in breed is typically more expensive than cheaper options. Buying Tesla at $37.10 in 2020, Apple at $14 in 2013, or Nvidia at $1.57 in 2016 can all seem like they were no-brainer investments. I mean, who wouldn't want to buy the stocks of quality companies at rock-bottom prices if you knew that they were going to explode dramatically into the future? That's why, as investors, it's critical to remember one key element that always interferes with all of our insights when we're looking in the past. 2020 hindsight is always perfect. When you have the benefit of knowing where a stock's going to go into the future, it's easy to look at the charts back at 1998 and say, of course, I would have gone all in on Apple when it was 11 cents a share. However, at the time, in 1998, Apple looked like it could go bankrupt. All of its products were completely unpopular, and Steve Jobs, who had only been proven in Apple in the 1980s, had only just returned. In fact, their biggest competitor, Microsoft, had to give them a huge loan in order to prevent them from going bankrupt. Apple's entire product lineup was failing. All of their computers, and there were far too many of them, were losing out to competitors. It truly looked like this now mainstay could have gone bankrupt. Had you gone all in, it would have been completely irresponsible as an investor because this was a company that looked like not only its best days were behind it, but that it would be going to zero shortly. Additionally, when looking in the past, investors need to remember that stock splits regularly happen over the years. A stock split is where a stock share price has risen to such a point that the company would like to be able to have it accessible to exchange traded funds, many of which have a limit on how expensive a stock price can go, and to make it so that it's accessible to retail investors, some of whom won't buy big ticket stocks. A 10 for one stock split means that each shareholder gets 10 shares total for each one share they hold but the price of the stock gets divided by 10. A $100 stock becomes a $10 stock, but everyone receives nine shares in addition to the one they previously held. A stock split adds no actual value to the underlying investment. If you had 10 shares at $100 before the split, you would have 100 shares at $10 after the split. In other words, both positions are worth $1,000. However, psychologically, stock splits can actually cause a stock's price to go up, as investors who thought the stock was expensive before would get in. But over the course of time, these stock splits can make investments look like they were more of a no-brainer to the untrained eye. When I bought Apple on April 18th of 2013, it was trading at $14.09 at the time. However, before the splits that have happened in the 11 years since then, it was actually trading at $394.52. When you zoom out on the chart, you can see that Apple had had an extraordinary run, hit an all-time high, and then pulled back dramatically. And at this point, analysts were saying that all of the growth days were behind Apple, that it wasn't going to be able to innovate anymore, that the iPad wasn't selling, and that the iPhone was reaching a peak in popularity. When you're talking about a stock that's trading at $394.52, it can be really intimidating even when you have a huge account buying into it at that price, because psychologically it feels like those analysts may have been right. Fast forward 11 years and Apple is approaching $250 a share. At pre-split prices, that means this stock would have been $7,000 a share before the splits that took place over those 11 years. So sure, it looks like a no-brainer. Of course, anybody would want to buy Apple at nearly $14 a share if you knew that it was going to go up to $250. But you only get that knowledge with the benefit of 2020 hindsight. At the time, me and everyone else had no idea how high Apple was going to go. For me, my thesis was that I really liked Apple's products and I believed that the company would be able to innovate again. 
and create even more growth into the future. When I initially opened my position in Tesla as we were headed into the pandemic crash, I bought it on March 12th of 2020 at $37.10. But the stock was actually trading at its pre-split price of $556.49. Just six days later, I made my second buy at $24.73, which was $371.01 at the time. And you have to remember when you zoom out on the chart, Tesla had only made this unbelievable skyrocket rise in the last few years. It could have easily sold off all the way down to $11.80 during the crash. No one knew how low the stock could go, and no one knew how much higher the stock would go afterward. Obviously, when you zoom out on the chart, anyone, even after Tesla has pulled back nearly 40% from its all-time high, would want to buy Tesla down at those prices. But at the time, there was no way of knowing how high it would go or how low it could go before it found its bottom during the crash. In Tesla's case, I believed in its products and I believed in the potential of growth over the years in terms of EV, AI, and the power sources that Tesla was working on. But I had no way of knowing if that all-time high was going to be the permanent all-time high and how much lower Tesla could go. But with 2020 hindsight, it's easy to see that I should have bought a lot more than I did. But who knew how high Tesla would go? I opened my position in NVIDIA on September 6th of 2016 at $1.56, which was then $78.35. Analysts at the time were saying the same thing then that they do now. They said it was overpriced and it didn't have much higher that it could possibly go. When you zoom out on the chart, you can see why they were saying this. It was at an all-time high, or at least very close to it, when I bought it. And it was hard to tell how much further it could go. Sure, its GPUs were incredibly popular in gaming PCs. It had some inroads in Nintendo, but it wasn't in the PlayStation or Xbox. It still isn't. And the data centers had only started using GPUs. There was no talk of artificial intelligence of any kind. Everyone knows when you zoom out and you see that NVIDIA recently made an all-time high over $144, of course they should have bought some when it was trading at $1.56 or even $78.35, which it was at the time. But you have to remember, a lot of semiconductor companies go bankrupt, and a lot of them are range-bound. If you look at a stock like Micron, while it does make new all-time highs, it also pulls back dramatically. Even NVIDIA has done so in the time that I've held it. Over the eight years that I've held it, it has pulled back more than 30% six times, and sometimes pulls back more than 60%, with the most recent time it did that in 2022, just two years ago. At the time, my investing thesis to get into NVIDIA was that I had used its GPU since the 1990s, and I really loved its products. I thought the data center had a really good possibility aspect going forward, and I just really liked the company. I had no idea AI was going to cause it to explode as much as it did. As investors, our job is to develop an investment thesis for each one of our assets, determine the amount of risk we're willing to take, and how far we're willing to go when it comes to buying it at sell-offs or adding to the position over time. The price of the stock at the time should never affect our outlook or our thesis. Because in the terms of stocks, the price is often irrelevant, as you can see from the three examples in this video. In a vacuum, the share price itself tells you nothing about the underlying fundamentals of a company. At minimum, you need to know the total number of shares that are trading, the amount of earnings per share, the track record of the company over years, and so many more data points to come up with an accurate valuation of where the stock is at that particular point. This is all a long way of saying that you should never get it discouraged when you hear an investor talk about how low a stock was priced when they first opened the position years ago. Chances are they felt as nervous buying the stock at that price as you do buying the stock today. The moral is that as investors, we need to find quality investments, make a buying plan to buy that stock, and then actually go through with it and buy it and it will almost always feel uncomfortable at the time. To learn more, check out my blog at getirked.substack.com. 